All right, welcome back. So as a recap, what did they do in chapter 13? Basically, James got tired. He was taking off Centipede's shoes or boots and Centipede fell asleep. Um, everybody was falling asleep. They also met a new insect who's about three feet big. Think of like a three feet big, like a, um, like a three-year-old child. That's about how big it is. Um, and it's a glow worm that turn, that was the light. Um, Miss Spider made beds out of a web, like a hammock, and everybody went to sleep. So let's see what happens. Chapter 14. We're off! Someone was shouting, we're off at last! James woke up with a jump and looked about him. The creatures were all out of their hammocks and moving excitedly around the room. Suddenly, the floor gave a great heave as though an earthquake were taking place. Oh, here we go, shouted the old green grasshopper, hopping up and down with excitement. Hold on tight. What's, what's happening? cried James, leaping out of the hammock. What's going on? The ladybug, who was obviously a kind and gentle creature, came over and stood beside him. In case you don't know... We are about to depart forever from the top of this ghastly hill that we've all been living on for so long. We are about to roll away inside the great, big, beautiful peach to a land of, 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 to a land of, of what? Never mind, never you mind, but nothing can be worse than this desolate hilltop and those two repulsive Aunts of yours. Here, here, they all shouted. Here, here. You may not have noticed it, the ladybug went on, but the whole garden, even before it reaches the steep edge of the hill, happens to be on a steep slope. And, therefore, the only thing that has been stopping this peach from rolling right away from the beginning is the thick stem attaching to the tree. Break the stem, and off we go. Watch it, cried Miss Spider as the room gave another violent lurch. Here we go. Not quite, not quite. At this moment, continued the ladybug, our centipede, who has a pair of jaws as large as razors, is up there on top of the peach, nibbling away at the stem. So imagine the centipede is at the stem where the stem the, the branch is holding on to the peach, and the centipede is up there biting it. In fact, he must be nearly through it, as you can tell from the way we're lurching about. Would you like me to take you under my wing so that you won't fall over when we start rolling? Oh, that's very kind of you, but I think I'll be all right. Just then, the centipede stuck his grinning face through the hole in the ceiling and shouted, I've done it! We're off! There he is. We're off! We're off! The others cried. We're off! The journey begins, shouted the centipede. Oh, who knows where it will end, said the earthworm. If you have anything to do with it, it can only mean trouble. Nonsense. We are now about to visit the most marvelous places and see the most wonderful things. Isn't that so, Centipede? Ah, that there is enough. There is no knowing what we shall see, cried the Centipede. We may see a creature with forty-nine heads who lives in a desolate snow. And whenever he catches a cold, which he dreads, he has a forty-nine noses to blow. We may see the venomous pink-spotted scrunch who can chew up a man with one bite. It likes to eat five of them roasted for lunch and 18 for its supper at night. We may see a dragon and nobody knows that we won't see a unicorn there. We may see a terrible monster with toes growing out of the tufts of his hair. We may see the sweet little bitty bright hen, so playful, so kind and well-bred. And such beautiful eggs, you can just boil them, and then they explode and they blow off your head. A new and a nauseous, surely you'll see that that kind ginormous and ginorable gnat, who 
who sting when it stings you goes in at the knee and comes out through the top of your hat. We may even get lost and be frozen by frost. We may die in an earthquake of tremor or nasty, nastier still. We may even be tossed on the horns of a furious dilemma. But who cares? Let us go from this horrible hill. Let us roll, let us bowl, let us plunge, let us rolling and bowling and spinning until we're away from old Aunt Spiker and Sponge. One second later, slowly, insidiously, oh, most gently, the giant, the great peach started to lean forward and steal into motion. The whole room began to tilt over and all the furniture went sliding across the floor and crashed against the far wall. So did James and the ladybug and the old green grasshopper and Miss Spider and the earthworm, also the centipede, who had just come slithering quickly down the wall. So what's happening? The peach is getting nibbled. The peach has come loose, and now we're on a steep slope. So it's not like a hill that's just a little hill. It is steep and goes straight down. Think of a ball on top of that hill. What's it going to do? Um, and if you notice the way that these words are written, lots of rhyming, probably a song. I didn't sing it the right way, but uh, that's why the... The typing is slanted to kind of give you that thought that it is a song and a poem. So off they go. We'll stop there for now. Chapter 15.